everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sammy and today we are going to be talking about Jesus. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I am a very big follower and believer of Jesus. So that's what I want to use my YouTube for. I want to get to know you guys. I want to talk a bit about Jesus. I don't know everything, um, but I do know how God has influenced me and has worked in my life. And I want to share that with you. And I want you guys to share it with me too. What I'm gonna be talking about today is letting go and letting God. What inspired me to do this video in particular? A lot of things that I've gone through in the last couple of months which has spiraled me to today. Yeah, disclaimer, there may be uh, a few tears here and there, so. I've just found myself just being like God, like. What do you want me to do? Not what I want to do, but what you want me to do. And I just kind of like started going crazy, just trying to figure things out, what I was meant to do. I lost a job. Um, I got my own apartment, so I was like taking on, you know, a huge responsibility by myself. What do, what are we doing now, God? Like, what are, where do you want me to go? And so things were like bumpy. They were up and down. Kind of got to a place where it was like, cool, okay, I'm like, I'm happy and life just kind of threw me a curveball and it was probably uh, the worst thing that anyone could ever hear and um, given if you know me I love my mom she's like my best friend and she has supported me all of my life in just my dreams and my career, if I wanted to dance, if I wanted to act. She was driving me, she was supporting me. She moved out to LA just to support my career. And we've just been attached at the hip and just best friends. So yeah, I got the news that she had recently been diagnosed with cancer. And um, I was just like, okay, okay all right, we're gonna handle this. We're gonna take care of this. Like, there's nothing that, um, you know, God can't do. He's worked so many miracles and, you know, this is just one of them. And so, I live in LA, my mom lives in Texas, and what I thought in, in my gut and my heart to do was to kind of just drop everything, come to Texas. And so that's what I did. And in the midst of, you know, all of, you know, my figuring it out and trying to, you know, figure out my life. I was just like, this is this is what I gotta do. I gotta be there for my mom. I gotta take care of her. I gotta, you know, this. I feel like this is where God's leading me. So now I'm here in Texas. I was like positive. That God's put me here for a reason. I'm gonna be here with my mom. You know, we're gonna do these treatments. You know, just praying over her. Also, just trying to figure out like. Still, like, God, what do you want me to do with my life? Like, everything has just been, like, thrown up in the sky and just like, okay, figure it out. And that's just how I felt. Everything in my life is unknown. Without realizing it, I started trying to find odd jobs, really weird things here and there on my computer all the time, just like emailing and texting and people I knew and how I could, you know, get some kind of finances somewhere. It's like sitting in this one room by myself every day, all day, I just like started becoming really depressed. Like getting really bad anxiety, it was horrible. It was affecting like my physical body. like. I, I thought I was like really sick. I thought I had this and I thought I had that. And it's just like, it's crazy how powerful your mind is. It literally just like took over my life. Just trying to control everything and trying to figure it all out and my relationships and everything. Just like, okay, this and like planning X, Y, Z and this has to happen and this happened. I literally drove myself crazy. Meanwhile, you know, I was listening to sermons, I was reading my Bible, I was worshiping, I was doing all these things, but I felt like I wasn't retaining any of it. Like, I wasn't believing God, I wasn't believing what I was reading, I wasn't believing what I was hearing, and it literally took me to really just surrender and just be like, wow, okay God, I just like heard it. 
lay it all down. Like, just surrender. Lay it all down. Stop trying to control everything in your life. Look to me. Look, like, I'm, I'm here for you. I love you. I died on the cross for you. And those are the things that I wasn't realizing. But, like, God has already, like, planned my life. Like, before I was even born. So, when I got to Texas, a friend of mine had told me about this, um, BSF. It's a Bible study fellowship. And so I joined that because I didn't have any friends and I didn't have like a group, which is very important for you. If you don't have a connect group or someone that you could talk to about God and just like be in the word, I highly recommend it. So cool. Just awesome group of girls just fellowshipping together. The first passage that we read was John 5, 1 through 5. And that just like hit me. Just like, gotta be back. Oh, there is a jerk. Okay, so this passage just like hit home for me. And it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethesda having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition, he knew he was in that situation, that he had been in that situation for a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. <laughs> I realized that I was focusing on the pool. Like I was making the pool my everything. If I just got that right job, or if I just, my this project went through, or if I just booked this one, you know, movie, or if I could just get this or that, or you know, X, Y, Z. And I was just like, I am focusing so much on the pool and I'm not looking up to God, the one who is my savior, who has planned my life, who knows every step and every path that I'm going to take. He knows everything, like he's Lord of all. As it says that he was waiting for a man to put him in the pool. He was waiting for man, he was, made, made, he was waiting, the way that I took that was that he was waiting for um, earthly things to help him succeed or help him heal, get healed. I find myself and, and all of us, we do that. Like we're like, oh, if we just make this one thing, if we can just get there, we'll like succeed or we'll have freedom. And it's like, no, God is like painting a picture right here of you don't have to get in the pool. I can just say, hey, get up and you'll be immediately healed. He told the man, rise up, take up your bed, your bed that you were wallowing in, and walk. And the man immediately walked. It was just like, wow. Okay, okay God, I totally get it. I'm just gonna totally follow you. It's not about me, it's not about what I want. It's not about anything that I do. All that matters is looking to you and giving my heart to you and surrendering. Okay, so this makes me think of another verse in the Bible that's like my all-time favorite verse. It's like my lifeline. It's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. It's in the message. It says, Are you tired, worn out, burn out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm, rhythms of grace. <laughs> I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I don't know about you, but that sounds amazing. 
I love this because it says, walk with me. Like, pray, be in the Bible, um, you know, fellowship, work with me, do your part and I'll do mine. And then he says, watch how I do it. Like literally watch how I do it. Watch how I move in your life. Have you ever been through a storm where uh, you get through it and you look back and you're like, oh wow, awesome, thanks God. Now I know why I just went through that. Like had I not went through that, I wouldn't have learned this or I wouldn't have grown or maybe there was some kind of knowledge or something that you needed uh, in that next season of your life that had you not went through that storm, you wouldn't have been prepared for it. Like God is working all things together for your good, which is so awesome because I feel like God has done that so many times in my life where I've gone through these storms, I've gone through these times where I'm just like running in circles and I'm like trying to figure it out. And then God just says, be still, you know, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. And at the end of it, I always look back and I'm like, wow, God, like you're so good. That's why I had to go through the storm. This is why all of these things were happening. Like you were working everything for my good. The Bible says he works all things for your good. Even if it's, you know, a storm and it's rocky and you're out on that boat and you're afraid, God's there and he's being like, hey, hello, I'm here. You don't have to be afraid. Like, don't fear. Fear is paralyzing. We have to combat fear with faith. And then if you noticed, it says that um, the man was healed and then he got up and he walked off. But later, uh, down the passage, God comes back and finds him and he's like, hey, you've been made well. He tells him that his name is Jesus. And so the man goes off and he tells the Jews that, hey, Jesus healed me. That's exactly like what he wants us to do is like, you know, there's so many times where we're like, oh, praying like, God, give me this or give me that and give me that. And then you get it. And then you just go on about your day. And he's like, no, like I'm here. I want to build a relationship with you. I want to walk with you. I want to, you know, do this, t this thing together. If you notice the guy didn't choose God, like God came and chose him. But that's our choice to follow him or not. So, if God didn't make that any more clear to me, later in that same week when I read this same passage, I heard a sermon by T.D. Jakes, who is like, amazing. I listen to his sermons all the time. And um, in his sermon, he was talking about the passage in Act 3, 1. I'm gonna go there really quick. It's kind of similar to the man at the pool. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms, money, cash money, from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for money, and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Respecting, he was, he was expecting to get money or something. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankles, bones, ankle bones, received strength. So leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. He entered the temple. He stood up and walked and entered the temple after he told him to get up and walk. Walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. I thought that was so uh, <laughs> crazy because I love how like God speaks to me. Uh, I know he speaks to other people in different ways, but he speaks to me through um, you know people and, and sermons and, and just like things like that of like hearing the same thing, like being told in the same week. They're different stories. I was just like, okay, I get it, God. I got it, I got it. Basically, he just like had to tell me like, hey, you know, it's not about you, it's about me. And it's not me-centered, it's God-centered. I have to, you know, look up to God and be like, you know, everything is not perfect, but you are, and I'm gonna expect. The man was expecting money from them, but I'm gonna expect 
the best that God has for me. Walk into the temple, walk into his word, walk into the Bible. Praise God. Share his word with you guys. That's mainly why I started this, is because I felt like God put it on my heart to do this. He had to literally shake up my life and completely move my environment to heal my soul. My soul wasn't well, and I didn't realize it at the time. And God literally had to move me to a different environment to be like, you know, hey, I'm here, come to me. Come to me who are weary. I was looking at the pool instead of the Savior, my Savior. You know, I was on the boat and I was freaking out. I was in fear and I was wallowing in the bed that I made for myself. He was just like, hey Sammy, remember me? I'm up here, I got you, hello. You know, I just made a man get up and walk. Like he's telling me, hey Sammy, get up and walk. You know what? Not even walk. I'm gonna make you run. Like I will help you run to things that you never even imagined for yourself. Like that's how God like works. That's how great he is. Is that he's like, hey, you know this thing that you're working with right now and you're trying to figure it out? I've got like something so much better for you. Just come walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. And then go and tell the world. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> So if you're feeling depressed or anxious about anything and you're just like trying to figure it out and you're like, God, what am I doing with my life? Just know that he's there, he's there, he's got you. He loves you. Let go of everything, let God, let God be in control of your life. Follow him, be in his word, pray, talk to him. He loves you. He's like amazing. He's so amazing. I mean, the man turned water into wine, and he made bread come from the sky. I mean, who else can do that? And if he can do that, he can do something amazing in your life, too. So, if you like this video, which I hope you do, because I would love to hang out with you more, be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a lovely comment below because um, I would love to hear, you know, how God's working in your life and just kind of start a conversation. I think that's where it begins. Being vulnerable. There's nothing wrong with it. It starts a conversation. So, yeah. Love this. Love you guys. And God bless. And remember, everything that you're going through, you're growing through. Bye!